if you've ever needed evidence to mind your own business the story that i'm about to tell you will blow your mind this man tragically lost his life all because he was fighting for his small house that's right his small house if you're not a zimbabwean by any chance and you don't know what a small house is it's literally a mistress like as in a married man sleeping with another woman this man is bernard shuanza a 37 year old man from harare who was in a relationship with this woman petronella mukubatsini who was 20 seven years of age so obviously if you understand the dynamics of a small house it literally means that the man will be sponsoring and supporting her lifestyle so they dated for four full years until she got pregnant and when she got pregnant he became scarce typical of a lot of married men the moment you get pregnant you cannot find them she then tried reaching out to him calling him texting him finding out where he lives trying to get a hold of his family but it was all to no avail as soon as he discovered that she was looking for him he ran away from the city and went to leave at his raw home just because he did not want his wife to find out that he was in an extramarital relationship. I think it is the biggest fear of every married man for his wife to find out that he is cheating. Petronella seeing that the man was dodging responsibility, she decided to do a little bit of research to find out where his family lived. So she found where his mother and sisters lived and tried to elope. So as far as Zimbabwean elopement works, you have to go with your auntie or a relative. So she went with her auntie, but the family refused to accept her. So when the family does not accept you, you have to sit outside until they allow you to enter their house. If they are verified that indeed the child that you're carrying belongs to their relative. It is not clear if they contacted Bernard, but I'm sure that they did. And he refused to take responsibility for her pregnancy. She ended up spending a total of seven days outside the home because she refused to leave. They would only provide food for her, but did not allow her to enter their house. I think the main reason why they did not allow her to enter the house is that they would have to acknowledge her as his second wife and they did not know how to explain this to his first wife it finally dawned on petronella that this man did not want to take her as a second wife so she left the family house and proceeded to her own family home where she proceeded to give birth unfortunately the baby only survived for a couple of weeks and lost his life after her mourning period she then returned back to her rented house and continued with her life although she was still heartbroken that a man that had impregnated her had dumped her when she needed him the most she decided to forgive him delete his number and proceeded to date another married man. I'm not quite sure how Bernard knew that she was childless and was in a relationship with another man, but when he heard about it, he did not take it very well. It does not make any logical sense that he had dumped her when she needed him, but when he heard that she was a free agent again, he still wanted her and he could not stop thinking about her. So he made his way to her house in Stonebridge in Harare South. When he got to her house, he knocked on the door, but she looked through the window and saw him and told him to get lost. He insisted that he wanted to see her and apologize to her but she was entertaining another man so she told him to leave bernard did not accept this and began banging on the door causing a commotion and people started gathering around this is when petronella's co-tenant named max hota pera a married man who lived at the same compound advised bernard to leave because people were starting to gather around but bernard was so filled with jealousy that petronella was entertaining another man so he refused to listen to maxwell maxwell then had to use force to try and force bernard out of the compound but they struggled as he tried by his might to break into Petronella's room. Maxwell being infuriated by Bernard's stubbornness went and took an iron rod and stuck Bernard on his head multiple times and he died instantly. When Maxwell's anger subsided he realized what he had done and the police had already been called. The police arrived and found Bernard's lifeless body on the ground in a pool of blood and arrested Max. He was denied bail and charged with murder. Although he had no intention or motive to kill Bennett, he still used a weapon that he knew had the capacity to kill a human being. He admitted to his crime but claimed self-defense. So Maxwell is probably in jail but I could not find any court records detailing his sentence. He lost his freedom because he inserted himself in a situation that had nothing to do with him. Maybe if Maxwell had minded his own business, Bennett would still be alive and he would still have his freedom. May Bennett's soul continue to rest in eternal peace.